What if your money could become a powerful tool for God's kingdom? And what if everyday wealth could create eternal impact? Well, Raymond Harris is here to share insights on how we can faithfully steward what God has given us for his glory. You wrote this book, Enduring Wealth, Being Rich in This World and the Next. Now that intrigued me, just the title alone, because I know that we are not to be storing our wealth up here in on earth, although God does give us resources for that, but to store it in heaven. And these are the things that are so important to God and to our own well-being. So what, what does it mean to be a good steward of what God gives us and how can we use our wealth to honor him? Well, I, I believe very firmly the Bible will back it up that God gives men and women their wealth and he gives men and women their ability to create wealth. And he also gives them the ability to enjoy their wealth. And so if God gives wealth to men and women, then it's got to be a good gift. It's what we do with it that makes the difference. And so I think we've been taught a little bit in church that it's actually better to be poor because wealth causes problems, which it does uh, if you don't know how to use it. But if wealth is a, is a gift, then it's to be used for the intended purpose of which God gave it to us. And he gives us different forms of wealth. I mean, uh, financial wealth is not the only wealth he gives us. He gives us talents and abilities, the ability to actually generate assets for the kingdom. And if we're kingdom minded, then wealth is a good thing to build the kingdom because when we go and stand before the Lord, we'll give an accounting of what we've been given. Uh, we, we've been entrusted with a lot. Each of us have been given great gifts. And so wealth is a funny thing. People don't like talking about it, but I enjoy talking about it because it's actually a good thing if it's used properly. So, And, you know, wealth doesn't even just mean monetary. It actually means so many more things, doesn't it? Well, I think leadership is a great wealth that God gives us. And if you look at what is what is Enduring Wealth, which is the book is titled, Enduring Wealth is wealth that transfers from this world into the next. And so what will be waiting for us in heaven uh, when we meet meet the Lord. And so, you know, we know our cars and our assets and our land and you know, our investments obviously won't go with us. But if we can take those assets and convert them into what I call kingdom currency, then those will transfer uh, into heaven. And so I think some of the great wealths in heaven are things like wisdom. So how do we buy wisdom, as Proverbs says? What steps can someone take to grow wealth and make you know, makes a real difference for God's kingdom? Well, that's a that's a good question. One that I've actually had to, to ponder. Why did God give me the ability to generate wealth? And I had to go through kind of a journey of why do I have wealth and what do I do with it? But if God gives us the abilities and talents and, the, and to be able to do that, then as we develop that, we've got to do something with our wealth. We either spend it, we save it, we give it to someone else to spend, uh, we hoard it. Uh, or we deploy it into uh, something that will last forever. And so I think I think wealth can be used in all those all those categories. It's good to save money. It's good to give money away. But it's also good to invest what you have so that when you uh, uh, pass from this world into the next, it'll actually benefit you. So wealth is uh, wealth is a good thing. And I think if you just know how to deploy it into, uh, what I say, kingdom capital. And I'm, I might continue by saying one of the things that my wife and I did was what what will transfer from this world into the next? And, and Jesus said it very simply to a, a rich young man one day. He says, if you want to have treasures in heaven, give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. And he said, oh, by the way, and come follow me. And so I love that, that one of the ways that we know we absolutely have treasures in heaven is if we take care of the poor mm -hmm. and the poor doesn't necessarily have to be uh as we think just financially poor they could be spiritually poor as well mm -hmm. but i think the poor are also those that can't take care of themselves um those that need our help uh, the elderly uh, the unborn are poor because they they can't protect themselves so mm -hmm. all of those things can be used to build God's kingdom on earth and transfer our treasures into heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people think that just because you're saying, you know, give, you know, give everything away. Maybe some people are, you know, that's they, they take that in the Bible. And that's not what it means. Give right. everything away. 
But, you know, we do see the widow in the temple who gave her last, all that she had, right? And so people are thinking, well, how can I give everything I have? Like, I have nothing left. But, you know, you're not, and you're saying so many great things. Like, you're saying, you know, it's it's the things that we can do for others that is actually kingdom building wealth. And um, that brings us down that road, right? So, you know, so how do we turn the things that we have here on earth into blessings, that last deep for eternity, even though you reflected on that, what else could we do? I, I love the widow. She's my favorite immortalized person. I really want to sit at her table at heaven. I want, I want to sit at her table when we have the big banquet. So <clears throat> my thought is that no one could have given more. And yet she gave probably, I calculated one time just for myself. I thought it was about 63 cents. If you take all the data and just kind of in current terms. And I thought, Wow, that is upside down to what we think. So mm -hmm. I think I think we can convert wealth very easily uh, by doing the things that we're prompted to do by the Holy Spirit. Now I think that we want to do a lot of good things and have God uh, commend us, but He will tell us what to do with our wealth if we'll just be quiet and listen to the nudgings or the the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I think that's the key uh, to be able to be investors. And and I might also. Uh, make the point when Jesus was giving us the parable of the stewards, those stewards were actually investors. They were not donors. They were to invest the king's money or the, the master's money, not simply give it away. So, <clears throat> so many organizations, and, and I love the generosity movement, but the goal in, 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 in being a steward is not to get rid of your money. It's to invest it into the kingdom in such a way that it can produce kingdom assets. It will entail giving money away, but it doesn't mean that you're successful as a steward if you just get rid of all your money. For-profit investing and not-for-profit investing is equally as important because uh, I, I, I find great joy investing in for-profit businesses that build God's kingdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, just like you said, who give it maybe say to their church, and then the church takes that money and gives it to a mission or something in the church, right? So that's kind of a way for them to do that as well. Um, and, and like you say, there's many different avenues that you can go to um, to grow God's kingdom. So this is wonderful. But, you know, you know, I'm thinking as you're talking to myself, like, you know, why would somebody want to buy this book? The book will inspire people to become stewards of the things that have been entrusted to them so that when they stand before Jesus, they will receive a great commendation from him. I think we all want to be commended by Jesus when we stand before him because we will all stand before him to give an accounting. And, and I'm talking to Christians. We're all saved as Christians. It's not a, a it's not a condemnation of, of whether you're saved or not. But when we are giving things, it's going to be a shame to stand before Jesus and not be able to present him crowns of things that we've done. And I think it would be uh, really embarrassing to show up to a potluck without a dish. And so it's going to be funny to, to, to stand before Jesus and not be able to present him with things that he has given us the opportunity to do while we're on earth. And we got to remember that we are the hands and feet of Jesus while we're on the earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus is in, you know, Jesus uses us as his ambassadors on this earth. And so we only have a short period of time in which to do the things that we do. And so once we once we cross over and we're standing before the Lord, it's too late. We cannot, you know, it's I always say you, you better convert your 20s in your pocket before you get on the plane to heaven because once you get on the other side, those $20 bills do not work. Yeah, I say that all the time. You can't take it with you. It's <laughs> not going to happen, okay? <laughs> can't take so it with you. But you can, you can actually convert into a currency that's usable. And and I and part of the book is written about how do you convert into kingdom currency. And then also how do you build economic engines, which are engines that that um will increase effort and it, it's like a, a regular engine. We use engines to create power and to ease things to make things easier to work. And so building economic engines on earth that produce kingdom assets. A good example of that is I helped a, a pastor in uh, Africa start a honey company. 
and uh, it, he was looking for donations to run his pastor's training school. And he came up with the idea. He said, well, I would like to be sustainable so I can do something to generate income. And he was a very unusual man, a brilliant guy. And he decided, well, let's try uh, honeybees. Let's see if we can we can make uh, beehives and have honey. And I, I helped him get started with the capital. And <clears throat> fast forward 10 years later, we had the largest honey company in Central Africa. And we were employing 15,000 people in wow. the honey business and producing about 500 metric tons of honey every harvest. That is a big business, but it was a for-profit business. It was employing the poorest of the poor and the money was used to take care of their pastor training school and build the business even bigger. So that's an economic engine. So that, you know, and I'm thinking again, you have, you are the hands and feet of Jesus. You are helping people to build that kingdom wealth and build the, the, and help people on earth. I mean, it's, that's what it's about helping the people on earth. So important. Thank you for doing that. You know, I don't have the skill and the intelligence to do these things. I have to, I have to rely on the Holy spirit to nudge me or introduce me to someone and then see where that relationship might go. Because I think we build a king. uh, Tim Keller once said, I heard him say this at a dinner. He said, the kingdom of God advances among friends. And I I look for my friends to build a kingdom. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm not smart enough. To, I don't do a strategic plan. I can't figure this stuff out. I have to listen to the nudgings of the Holy Spirit to be able to do a lot of the things we do. And then we act out of obedience. And um, some of the things we do fail. I mean, and I think that's that's okay because the things that fail, God is the great recycler of everything. And so the failures are used to, uh, to be recycled into good things later. Mm -hmm. And it teaches us too, right? How to, um, yeah, how to sift through the sand. (laughs) Well, as you get your uh, donation requests in the mail, you have to sift through those. And as I always say, don't throw out all the mail. You got to go through it, but you know, because you don't want yeah. to the bills, but yeah, <laughs> you have to go through a lot of stuff. You know, we're going to be focusing on eternal things. How do we not get caught up in the pull of materialism? That's my last question to you. Well, materialism in and of itself, I mean, we all need material things to live. It's okay to have a new car. It's okay to have a lake house if you want a lake house or a cabin in the woods. It's okay. It's it's not like you can't have these things. But God entrusted your assets to you for a purpose. And what you have to figure out is how does God want to use his money? Uh, the thing I learned early in my career is I should not take possession of my money, that I was simply a manager of the money that God had given me. And our architectural firm that that I developed grew to be a very large architectural firm. And we had about 80 uh, architects on staff at our peak. And we generated a lot of money. Is that money all mine to, to, to spend and squander? Well, no, you have to take care of your employees and pay them well. And you, if you have partners, you have to pay your partners. But then you, what do you do with the rest of the money? You have to do something with that money. And what do you do? Do you squander it? Well, no. Can you buy a new car with it? Well, yes, you can. You know, it, but when you buy a new car or you buy a lake house, you have to look at the fact that there are a lot of people around the world that don't have enough. And is it OK for you to have that and they don't have enough? Well, yes, it is. It's OK, but you will account for it. And so I do have a new car. I like buying new cars. I buy a new car probably every three to five years. I enjoy that. But I also know that it's not my car and I take good care of it. The Lord has entrusted it to me. And so. I take good care of my stuff if I buy it, but I also know that I'm going to stand before him to give an accounting. Did I do all I could to take care of those that he put in my path? And so Mm -hmm. it's not an either or it's a both and it's just, and it's not a balancing act. It's, it's really a conviction of the Holy spirit. Can I buy this? And do I feel peaceful about buying this thing? And so, uh, in a full disclosure, we have an extra, we have a vacation home in Wyoming and people will say, well, why do you have that? I said, well, I don't know. We we bought it 22 years ago to minister to our family. And it's a retreat and a respite for our family. God blessed us in the fact that the, the home has now gone up 5X from what we paid for it. So we'll be able to get out of it. And then we can use that money for something else. But 
in and of itself, having nice things is not a problem. We need to understand that. There's no holiness in poverty. Uh, the, the enemy uses poverty uh, in, as one of his greatest tools to keep people um, um, just to depress and repress people. So poverty is not holy at all. But also the balance is being wealthy and the the the, the gospel of wealth in and of itself, um, the prosperity of uh, God will bless me if I'm good. That is, is a false teaching as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not good to be poor and it's not good to be rich. And the Bible tells us that. So it's what we do with it. And if we honestly understand that we are stewards of what we've been given, then we really don't have our own wealth. We are just managers of someone else's wealth. And so mm-hmm. you would, um, one other thing I would say is you know, like a stockbroker taking care of your, your affairs in the market. If the stockbroker broker does a really good job, it, he's entitled to a commission, but that stockbroker doesn't own the assets that he's investing. He's simply managing those assets for the owner. And if we look at it the same way, we're managing the assets of the Lord. And is it okay for us to take a commission? I think so, particularly if we do a good job. Mm-hmm. Now, now, with everything you're telling me, I have to ask you this question. You're you're helping all these other people. What do you do for fun? I, I just got to know. <laughs> What's well, your hobby? I have I, I have uh, four children and 10 grandchildren, and it's consumed a lot of time. And they're from 13 to 2, so they're all young. So we do a lot of hiking and, and uh, goofing around in the summers. And so I spend a lot of time with the grandkids, um, and I enjoy that. But I also run. I love running. And so I... I've run all my life, and so I'm not very good at it, but I love doing it. So, and and I I um I just enjoy my family a lot, and I enjoy being outside a lot. I sit out in the mornings uh, every morning outside, no matter how cold it is. I just put blankets on, but I like being outside. So, that that's great. Well, I'm so glad you shared all that. But you know, I just want everybody to know that you can get Richard's book, Enduring Wealth: Being Rich in This World and the next on amazon.com and um anywhere else they could get this yeah you can uh get it uh on broad street uh publishing's website they they list all the retail outlets uh which is barnes and noble and christian book distributors and things like that you can also uh go on um uh, business by design uh, uh book Dot com, which is a, a a website we set up for this book and two other books that I've previously written so and then I'm on LinkedIn and stuff like that. So if people want to, they can find me. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> so what would you like to leave my audience with today? I would encourage everyone to uh, put all their chips on the table and then push them towards Jesus. And that doesn't mean uh, in the case of the rich young ruler to become poor, but he just had to let go of his stuff. I think that's what I would say is just put all your chips on the table and push them towards Jesus because you don't own them anyway. You just think you do. So what if the decisions you make today with your resources could shape eternity? What's the first step you'll take to start stewarding your wealth for a lasting eternal impact? Well, thanks for joining me. And if you like this interview, like, and subscribe for more Christ-centered conversations and check out the website, thecallwithnancysebedo.com to find out more about our previous guests. Until next time, all glory and honor to King Jesus.